Yeah, we welcome you back to Midpoint. I'm John Bachman in for Ed Berliner today. We're also welcoming in the former communications director for the Indiana Republican Party. He's now a senior project manager, manager at Hathaway Strategies, Pete Seat. Pete, great to have you with us here on Midpoint and Newsmax TV as always. A pleasure to be here. Thank you. All right, so we're going to talk about what is really going to take to spur the millennial generation into being politically active in this country. What's your take? Well, I commend those who are trying to get more millennials involved, particularly in terms of running for office, but it's going to be an uphill struggle. Uh, millennials are extremely apathetic and disillusioned by the political process. Uh, they see that Washington is broken, it's too divisive, and it's not future focused. It's not, it's not focused on solutions to better our country. So millennials have challenged our energies into personal pursuits to better our communities and, uh, and shunned institutions, particularly political parties. Now, of course, now, the, of course the folks would say we're at a tipping point here sooner or later uh, with uh, look, you know, Medicare potentially running out, some of these entitlements uh, that, that past generations have benefited from, the, you know, our generation, millennials, you know, they'll see it coming out of their paychecks, but they'll never see the benefit of it. There's got to be a point, a tipping point when they say enough is enough, institution or not, we have to get involved. I, I'm always amazed by how many millennials, how many young people are interested in the issue of Social Security. And they really are thinking about it and realizing that it's on the fast track to insolvency. You know, a, a columnist much smarter than I recently talked about millennials becoming prisoners of the past and struggling in 20, 30, 40 years down the road because the leaders of today are failing to put in place solutions that will make our futures better. And the only way I see that really happening is if millennials band together and make our voices heard and encourage candidates for president or for local office, for Congress, uh, to really focus on ideas and not just on talking points that get them on television. Now, a lot of folks talk about folks the divisions about. within the Republican Party, conservatives versus you know, rhinos or moderates, whatever you want to call it. But you know, would you say there's also a, a generational gap within the Republican Party? There's absolutely a generational gap, I think, both in terms of the Democrat Party, the Republican Party. But w the real generational gap is that millennials aren't really ideological. Mm. Uh, we are, as a generation, a hybrid of ideologies and kind of take a little from column A, a little from column B, which makes some ideological folks, uh, makes their head explode when they can't really figure out where someone's coming from. But the, the millennial generation, I think, is very easy to understand. We're attracted to ideas and driven by results. And as long as our elected leaders focus on that results, they will be able to bring millennials into the fold and prove that the political process is important. Now, we got a pretty good, uh, I guess, litmus test on how millennials feel about the Republican Party when you look back a couple weeks ago at what took place at CPAC, because for folks who've never been to CPAC, uh, the audience skews very young because a lot of kids go there on their spring breaks. A lot of uh, very engaged uh, future Republicans go there uh, to, to, to feel things out. Now, we know Rand Paul won the straw poll there. Uh, he's won it in years past. Does that, to, to, to you, show the direction that the party should try to take, the, or to try to take itself in the future? I wouldn't read too much into the straw poll results. Uh, uh, someone with the last name Paul has won, I believe, in three or four of the past five uh, CPAC straw polls. I've attended a number of CPACs myself when I was in college and after somewhere around 10 uh, in the last uh, uh, 15 years or so. And it's certainly an energetic event. A lot of young people do show up, but they are what, what we all call the base, the most uh, hardcore, energetic, ideological of the group. And I, I wouldn't say that they speak for all millennials out there. They're just the ones who are currently involved, and we just need to get more involved. Yeah, and you know, Rand Paul seems certainly happy to court that vote. He mentioned some uh, things sure. about Jeb Bush and his, uh, you know, stance on uh, medical marijuana. Do you think Jeb Bush, uh, or, I mean, I'm sorry, Rand Paul might be a little, I don't know, naive for trying to pursue that line, or is it a smart play on his part? Well, he's doing the medical marijuana. He's talking a lot about privacy, which is an issue that resonates with a lot of young people who carry around smartphones and tablets everywhere we go and are uh, 
worried that the government or corporations are going to try and take advantage of the data that comes from from our devices. So he's been smart to to get that attention, but in the end, it's going to be the people who really have ideas for the economy, for jobs, for entitlements, for health care that get millennials into this process. All right, so the whole marijuana thing might go up in smoke for Rand Paul, pardon the pun. Uh, we got more to talk about. PT's going to be back with us. We'll talk about the issues that might really matter uh, more to millennials and how they can get, out, get folks out to the polls coming up right after this short break. And we welcome you back to Midpoint. I'm John Bachman. Along with me is Pete Seed, a former communications director for the Indiana Republican Party. Also worked very closely with President George W. Bush. Pete, we were talking about uh, the CPAC straw poll and how it might be, I don't know, the best poll for determining who's not going to become the nominee of the party uh, down the road here. But, you know, it is important uh, for a lot of these uh, Republican leaders to go there and, and talk to the younger generation to, to, to hear what they have to say. And having been to CPAC myself, having had a few conversations uh, with some of these college Republicans, I was always surprised to hear them talk uh, so eloquently about the economy, and that really is the is the issue that matters most to young voters. Absolutely, jobs being the top one on that list. You know, we found out with last month's job report that among 18 to 29 year olds, which encompasses the majority of the millennial generation, uh, underemployment is at 14 percent which is far and away above what it is for the country as a whole. So this continually, continual, uh, I guess, uh, slowness in our economy with, in terms of creating jobs is hurting millennials the most. And they're looking for people who are going to provide solutions and help provide jobs as they're coming into the job market. Now, we, we've heard from a lot of the candidates thus far. Um, who do you think out there uh, in the pre-presidential election do you feel like is doing the best job? I'm not just speaking to millennials on that very kind of, I don't know, maybe, I don't want to use the word term pandering to millennials, but who do you think is really doing the best job of reaching them on those issues they do care so much about? Well, let's talk about CPAC for, for a bit. Obviously, Rand Paul, uh, well-received in terms of the straw poll. You heard a great reception for Scott Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, who's well-known, especially amongst those who have been paying attention to the process over the last several years. Jeb Bush got a good reception as well, uh, as did some others. I, I think for the millennials who are tuned in right now in March of 2015, they're giving people a fair hearing. Uh, listening to the ideas that they have and their vision for the country and will make their decision uh, as this plays out in the next several months. But you didn't give me one name who you think's doing the best. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Nice try. All right. Well, it didn't have to be necessarily your, your choice for the nominee thus far, yeah. but I did want to get your take. Now, you did mention earlier about the, this generation, and you, know, we, you can look at some stats and say they're actually larger than the baby boomer generation, uh, but they're being impacted economically uh, like the generation before the boomers in many ways because even though it might not be as as strong at this point the economic uh, impact of what they're going through without with the underemployment is going to be felt for perhaps a much longer period of time do you think there's any way uh, this generation can ever fully recover there's a lot of similarities between the millennial generation and those of the Great Depression in terms of how we view our role in society, how we want to give back to our communities, to our cities, states, and country. Uh, we're just finding different avenues for doing that. Uh, I think the one thing that separates the greatest generation and the millennial generation is our need for instant gratification. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to want the answer right now. And that is what I believe at the moment is holding us back. We don't see the political process as providing those answers in the immediate. So it's hard to get us to see that, okay, if we get involved now, five, 10 years down the road, we may have solutions that will make our futures better. Now, again, I don't want to offend my parents because I wouldn't put them in this category, but there are millennials that I've heard from that say, you know, the boomer generation that was the most entitled the, the galaxy has ever seen, and here we are about to pay the consequences for their misuse of our resources. Do you think that kind of attitude benefits anybody, or do you think we'll hear more from that from this generation? I think it's, it's an important conversation to have. Uh, I mention it in my book. There's a chapter dedicated to that, The War on Millennials. Mitch Daniels, a former governor of my home state, 
of Indiana has talked about this as well, as have others, that baby boomers were given a lot and squandered a lot in terms of the finances of this country and really putting our debt and our Social Security and entitlement programs on these downward spirals. And millennials are going to have to step up and fix this mess. All right, perhaps maybe another greatest generation in the works. Pete C., thanks so much for being with us. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for having me. All right, now what Pete was talking about, the forward-looking nature of the party is certainly important. We talked about uh, school choice with Larry Elder a little bit. That's one area where I feel like the Republican Party has a big opportunity to gain a lot of voters, younger voters, uh, and urban voters as well. Be interesting to see how that plays out. We'll be back with more here on Midpoint. We're coming to a close. We've still got a little bit more for you. We're going to talk about the top stories of the day in our news roundup right after this.